ITR boxing. You heard it here first. Pretty cool videos. And I heard they're also in HD. ITRboxing.com. Um, when my dad trained me in Marysville when I was young, four to six, four to seven, we just trained out of the garage. So we tried that for a while, but um, I, I was, I did not want to be in the garage with my dad like that. So he started looking into opening a, a boxing gym. And in 2004, when I was 13, my dad got this building right here and uh, the rest was history. But um, a lot of blood, sweat and tears in this place, a lot of history. Um, this was my dad's sanctuary. Uh, anyone who knows my dad knows that he loved boxing more than anything. I mean, a lot of people say that or whatever, but we didn't have cable at my house. We, were, we watched VHS uh, boxing matches. We watched Ezra Charles, Joe Walcott, Ray Robinson, Pernell Whitaker, Alexis Arguello, all kinds of all kinds of different boxers. But that's how that's how I grew up. Um, my dad loved the sport, and you know, a lot of people's parents and uh, you know teach their kids how to change oil and do that and this. But for me, it was it was it was always boxing. That's what that's what my dad that's what he instilled in me. Um, boxing from from the ground up, and um, he wasn't a guy who was in a rush to do things. He wanted things to be done correctly. And um, so the gym opened in 2004, and uh, it ran for 12 years until 2016. This, uh, this is a piece of Todd Field, with my son's first coach, uh, which is Miguel's dad, passed away. He was an amazing guy. And I never knew somebody who knew so much about boxing. But uh, yeah, we planned, I did a lot of portraits of him when he passed, but we did put this one in here for him. And probably do a few more later on. And November 2nd, 2016, um, my dad was tragically killed um, coming down the stairs of, of our boxing gym. I wasn't at the gym at the time. Me and my dad were always having our little issues, so I wasn't here. But um, yeah, he, he was killed um, coming down the stairs um, with my, my little brother. He was supposed to fight in the Junior Olympics the next weekend. And all that kind of fell through, but man, my little brother, all my all my siblings, they're 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 my heroes because, you know, if you would have told me something like this would have happened a few years ago, I thought you know we wouldn't be able to make it through something like that. But with faith in God and and strength and the stuff that my dad put in us, we were able to um, get through a tragedy, and it, it wasn't easy. Um, after the gym, after my dad passed, the gym was closed for about two years, um, and this whole two years, I wasn't, I wasn't all there, you know, I, um, I wasn't, I wasn't at my best, I wasn't living right, I was self-destructing, I was upset, and I really wanted to hurt someone, but, um, David Castro, who boxed with my dad, he was, I think he was 13 at the time, yeah, he was, he was 13. He started getting contact with me about a year and a half after my dad's death. Uh, I would watch boxing and it would motivate me to, to keep running and uh, keep exercising for a little bit. And then one day I built up the courage to call Coach Miguel. And from there we just started training uh, little by little and uh, set goals for us to achieve. And little by little, we started achieving every goal until we opened the gym, and that's that's when everything started. And uh, he asked me once, and I think I was so um, using drugs and drinking and doing all that that I kind of I kind of flaked on him, and because um, we didn't have a facility, we didn't have nothing, and it was just kind of seemed far fetched, and my mind wasn't my mind wasn't in the place to do anything. But he reached out again, and, and that was a big wake-up call for me. I said, okay, I can't, I can't let this kid go out like that. I love this kid, and most importantly, my dad loved this kid. And you are the last fighter to train with Coach Taj? Yes. It's an honor. He, he was, if you could say if there was a boxing historian, uh, you could say it was him, because he, he really did know his stuff, and he would really be strict about us, uh, our training regimen, and, and where we had to be, and if we weren't there, then we wouldn't fight. That's how serious he would take the, he would take us getting ready for fights. 
So I stepped up and we just started out of middle school here in town, just me, David, and some gloves and some mitts. And from there, I was able to get into a pastor, um, a pastor's garage. Um, David Dina, he was uh, the pastor at um, Praise Chapel in, in Yuba City. And we started working in there and we had a little bit more space. And so some of these old kids that were trading with my dad, they started uh, coming too. It's really hard work, you know. Everyone tries their best and we're all respectful to each other. And it's just always hard work. Oh, the heat, man, that's, that's one thing. We always keep it hot. We always try to condition ourselves. So like at these other gyms, they have the AC and everything, we don't get all tired, so we're used to the heat, and yeah. <laughs> it's what I could be. The, the fact that I could be great, maybe I could be known as an all-time great, maybe. <laughs> um, that I could be a world champion one day, or just be known and help people. And uh, all for free, I wasn't charging no one anything, and um, we slowly started to build. We had about 10, 10 of us in a little garage. And so financially, I wasn't really set to do anything. I was, um, I wasn't, I, I didn't really know what to do. I felt like kind of lost, but um, with the help of my uncle Danny Valdez, we started looking for, for places to, uh, to, to find another place in town to get this going again. And the same building where, that we had for those 12 years here at Hit Squad um, remained vacant, believe it or not. And um, I didn't know if it was a place where we wanted to go back to, if my sisters would be okay with it, if my little brother would be okay with it. Um, just because what had happened with my dad and I wanted to talk to David and see if he was even okay with, with um, going back, you know. Um, I didn't really know how we were gonna feel. It might, it might have been emotionally too too much for us, but um, I met with David and I, I, I met with the owner of the building and uh, we walked in here. All the everything was taken out. Um, it was like home. I felt inspired. I felt strong. I felt my dad's presence. I felt like this. That was. I felt like everything was meant to be and God and God was working and so. Uh, October um, 2018 uh, got the keys back for this place and we we've been going strong and what I mean it wasn't easy in the beginning and it's a it's a definite adjustment to you know I'm not I wasn't a trainer I'm, I'm only 29 years old then I was 27 and so it took a little adjusting and getting used to but um, it's coming along and most importantly this place is a place, not everyone's going to be a world champion. Not, not everyone is, is going to be a boxer. But the most important thing about this facility in this place is giving kids hope, giving kids an outlet. Um, it's, not about, it's not about what we accomplish in boxing around here. I mean, it is because we're competitive and we want to win. But most importantly, it's about giving these kids an outlet and making sure these kids become successful um, productive people in society and don't take some of the routes that you know some of the dumb things that I did and I, and I try to I try to talk to these kids and let them know about the importance of uh, not just boxing um, even though they're gonna learn how to box here but the importance of doing good in life and and spreading positive energy into into this world and into this community because that's what my dad was all about I mean he died at 43 but he would have rather died tragically at 43 than live to 80, 90 years old and not give back to this community the way that he did. He, that was, that, that's what it was about for him. To put the, put the gym on the map and make my parents proud and make my, my team and family proud. Who do we do it for? Andre, we're the champions.